Chris Gaffney of Everbank World Markets joins me now. He's a speaker here at the Metals and Minerals Conference in New York. Chris, thanks so much for being with me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So I know your presentation is focused on currencies. Let's talk about the U.S. dollar, Chris. Uh, how do you see it right now? What's the state of the U.S. dollar for you? Well, right now the dollar's got some strength, I think, mainly due to uh, people using it as a safety or liquidity hedge. Um, they've rushed into the dollar with all of the uh, macro events that are going on across the globe. Um, also, the Fed has chose to uh, boost the equity market here in the U.S., so we're seeing a lot of foreign buyers into that uh, equity market and buying dollars because of that. Now, longer term, I don't think the dollar is going to hold on to this strength because there's a lot of things that are going to pressure the dollar lower, uh, especially the amount of debt that we've accumulated in, in, uh, uh, here in the U.S. and across the globe. All that liquidity sloshing around is going to drive the value of the dollar lower as we keep producing more and more of those dollars. So that said, Chris, we always speak about the correlation between the U.S. dollar and gold. What would that mean for gold? Well, right now, gold, as you know, uh, fell dramatically in April. Um, we try, I've, I've been uh, sitting on the desk at Everbank World Markets for over 20 years now, and uh, I try not to make short-term calls on, on gold, of course. But uh, um, right now, we think the gold will probably stay down for a while. But again, there's there's a lot of factors that I think will, will prove to push the price of the value, our value of the gold higher. Um, mainly the, the demand from China and India. Um, we're still seeing strong demand from China and India, and, and especially Especially with the change um, from being more of a manufacturing economy in China to a one of consumer. Um, and as those consumers get more wealthy, as they accumulate more uh, cash, um, that culture um, invests the, that extra money into the metals market. So we're going to see a lot more demand from those markets. But Chris, would you say then that dip that we saw in gold, well dip is, a, is an understatement, yeah. um, is that, was the U.S. dollar the number one factor that affected gold, or are there other factors that we should be paying attention to? I think there are a lot, a number of other factors that uh, caused that dip. And, and again, I, I think that it was a, um, we saw gold run for a long time, and it, it was a natural reaction to the amount of, uh, um, uh, to the trajectory of, of the gold price. And, and I think it was a pullback. It was a little more than a pullback, of course. Um, and, and again, I get back to timing the markets is very difficult. And as especially for retail investors. Um, it's hard to try to hit the top or hit the bottom to buy back in. And in fact, on the desk at Everbank, uh, we saw record amounts of transactions being called into the desk during that drop. And they weren't buying transactions, there were people selling. So they were selling into the drop and uh, it, it actually increased the amount of drop. So I think it's smart if, if you're going to take a position in, in the metals markets, I, I, I hate to try to time the market. I think it's better to try to dollar cost average, which is a, a good investment technique and, and you put a set amount, you have a disciplined approach, uh, put a set dollar amount into the markets each uh, on a regular basis and that way you can lower your overall cost uh, of your gold or, or precious metals. So you're saying regardless of the market action, just repeat this. I think it's a long-term holding. I think it's something that everybody needs to have in their portfolio for diversification. Um, it is uh, not correlated with the equities or the fixed income markets. We've seen some correlation with the dollar, but um, I think the smart thing to do is to, to establish a position in the foreign, uh, foreign currencies and the metals. And to do that, you do a dollar cost averaging into it because that way you're buying more of that uh, asset when prices are low and less when they're high. Well, I just, that brings me to my next point, Chris, because I've been speaking to a lot of people on the floor here at the conference who are just suffering, telling me, you know, I've just been hammered by this market. They've lost so much money and I feel for them. So what do you tell them? Again, don't try to time things. Uh, I think that you, you have to have a disciplined approach to investing. Try to take emotions out of it. Um, if you're well diversified, there's portions of your portfolio that are appreciating. Uh, a diversified portfolio includes U.S. equities. U.S. equities are hitting all-time highs. Um, so when a, a well diversified portfolio is the key and that will, um, and if you can take emotion out of the investment uh, choice, which is very difficult, I know, but if you can remove emotion Right. and just do a, a standard, uh, have a strategy and stick to it across all markets. Right. So leave your emotions at the door. Chris, thank you right. so much. Thank you. And thanks for watching our coverage from the Metals and Minerals Conference here in New York. We'll have more for you later in the day. In the meantime, you can email us at newsfeedback at or follow this conversation on Twitter at Daniela Cambone. Thanks for watching.